Hello friends, my name is Jitendra Bafna. I am a senior MuleSoft architect. In today's video, we are going to see what is a MuleSoft virtual private network that is AnyPoint VPN. In last video, we have seen like how we can set up the VPC, how we can set up the dedicated load balancer, what is the difference between shared load balancer and the dedicated load balancer. So I will suggest before watching this video, please go through those two videos. So it will give the idea on like what is the VPC, what is dedicated load balancer, and it will make you know, uh, easy for you to understand the MuleSoft virtual private network. Okay, so we'll start it with what is the MuleSoft VPN or AnyPoint VPN. So VPN is basically stand for virtual private network and AnyPoint VPN uh, create a secure connection between a cloud hub and your on-premise data center. What does this mean? Basically, let's consider you have deployed your application on the cloud hub. And now you want to access a Microsoft SQL database or any any database which is exist on on-premise data data center or maybe any services or any system which exist on the on-premises data center. Okay, so how you can access that? So for that you need to create a VPN between your cloud hub and your on-premise data center. So what are the various capability of AnyPoint VPN? So AnyPoint VPN support a site-to-site -site internet protocol security connection. So that is the IPsec tunneling. Each AnyPoint consists of two tunnels that enables you to connect to a single IP address at the remote location. And to connect the additional remote location, create another VPN. So what does this mean? So basically, you have a one VPN device on your on-premise data center. So each VPN device have a a remote IP address right so what we are doing from cloud of we are connecting to that remote IP address or to that remote or to that VPN endpoint so in in, uh, in other case like you know in some cases we may have to do you know uh, connect to the multiple VPN devices so some data center may have a multiple VPN devices so in that case you create a multiple VPN to connect the multiple VPN devices okay so what is like, you know, the physical or software appliance is called as a VPN endpoint, which I mentioned that is the VPN de device is a terminator on your side of the connection. The mule side, mule shop side of a connection is implementation of a virtual private gateway. So basically, uh, mule shop VG VGW is associated with a single VPC. Okay, so one VPN is associated with a single VPC, but can support up to 10 VPN connections. Okay, so you can like uh, one VPC can be associated with you know uh, uh, like uh, 10 VPNs basically, and the mu the speed provided by mules of VPN is uh, around like you know uh, the maximum throughput is around 1.25 Gbps. So mules, what is like uh, what kind of you know uh, it support two kind of uh, routing. One is dynamic routing and one is static routing. So in dynamic routing, basically, you know, if your uh, VPN device is supporting a BGP protocol, in that case, you can go with the dynamic routing. That is the border gateway protocol. Okay. In case if your VPN device or if your VPN endpoint uh, doesn't support a dynamic routing, then you can use the static routing. In static routing, what you have to do, you have to provide the CIDR mask, you know, subnets uh, that needs to be accessible through your endpoint VPN. So basically, you have on-premise data center and your application might be exist in some subnet right so, right but you're like you want to you know access the ms sql database or some services you know some backend services they might be existing on some subnet so you have to configure those subnet in the any point vpn so you are saying like i am allowing allowing this particular subnet for cloud up to connect on-premise data center so that is how the IPsec VPN IPsec tunneling look. So I have created my VPC, which is 10.0.1.024. I have an on-premise da data center, which have a like CIDR block or 192.168.0.0.22, which have a database and some backend services. And I have deployed some of the application in my cloud of within the VPC, and I want to access these databases and service. So for that, what I will do, I will set up a VPN between a cloud hub and the on-premise data center. So VPN will have its remote IP address. So VPN device will have a remote IT IP address or it, it, it is also known as, known as, you know, it is also, you know, uh, known as basically, you know, uh, like uh, 
VPN endpoint basically. Okay. So this is how we can set up uh, IPsec tunneling VPN between Cloud Hub and the on-premise data center. So that is the secure connection between your Cloud Hub and the on-premise data center. So basically, I will explain once again. So I have a Cloud Hub. Within the Cloud Hub, I have set up the VPC, which uh, like uh, which have a CIDR mask of 10.0. Dot 1.0 dot slash 24. I have deployed multiple MuleSoft application and this particular MuleSoft application has to access the databases and the services exist on the on-premise data center which uh, have a, a subnet of 192.168.0.0.22. So this database and services exist within this particular CDR block or subnet. So apart from that like I have VPN endpoint which is 197.87.68.90 and what happens so when we configure the VPN we have to give this particular uh, VPN remote IP address I will show you uh, in demo or you know how we can configure that so once you configure uh, any point VPN uh, the, it will also give you know uh, the cloud of external gateway IP addresses that we need to configure on the VPN device let's start like how we can set up uh, any point VPN IP sectional for setting up VPN so what you have to do you you, you have to make sure like your VPC is already set up so without VPC you cannot set up the VPN first step you need to set up the VPC in my last video I have already shown how you can set up a VPC okay so for setting a VPN you need to give it, navigate to runtime manager VPN so you can see you go go to you know uh, runtime manager and like you, you will see the VPNs so now once you see the VPNs so you can say you know create a VPN once you click on create VPN you have to provide the name of VPN you have to select the VPC from the drop down for which we need to create a VPN. So basically, you need to create a you know, you need to select the VPC from the drop down basically. Okay, you select the VPC. So, and you are saying, like, I want to create basically this is my VPC. So, this is the subnet of you know, particular a CDR block allowed in that particular VPC. You know, so we are selecting that particular VPC, then remote IP address. So, you need to enter the remote IP address this particular remote IP address of your remote of your VPN endpoint or VPN device that is 197 this can be you know this is just an example there are two type of writing uh, routing which I have already described dynamic and static routing in case of dynamic routing so basically you need to make sure your VPN device support a BGP protocol that is a border gateway protocol in that dynamic routing we have to enter a remote ASN so that can be between 64512, 65534 and default is 65001. You can use any existing ASN in your network okay, or private ASN that is not assigned to your network basically. So basically this remote ASN is for your on-premise data center. Okay. So you have to like either you can use some existing ASN which is already called, uh, available or you can select anyone, any anything from this particular range 64512, 65534 and which should not be assigned to your network basically then secondly you have to also enter a local asn that is the mule swap asn for the mule swap like for the vpn you no know, mule swap vpn you have to enter so default is 64512 and use the private uh, asn and that should not be assigned to your network so basically don't use the asn which is already assigned to your network and this asn is basically for mule swap in case of static routing so you either you can go with dynamic routing or static in case of static routing i mentioned like you know uh, if you want to accessible uh, vpn like you know select the static uh, routing and enter the cid range that need to be accessible to the vpn so in that in this case so i want to access this particular uh, c uh, like cid range 192.62.0.22 so i will configure that cid range in my any point vpn Okay, there can be multiple CIDR range. So basically up to 90, up, you can add up to 95 uh, CIDR range. So as you mentioned, you can add more CIDR range using add new rules in static route up to 95 subnets can be added. Let me go with uh, diagram it. You know? So basically I mentioned like you select the name, you can give any name of, uh, to your VPN. Select the VPC for which you are creating the VPN, then remote IP address. This is the remote IP address belong to your VPN endpoint, your on-premise VPN uh, device. So that will that should be a publicly publicly available then routing you can select static or bgp if you're selecting static you know so you have to provide the cid range so like in in our case the cid range will be this 192.60.0.22 where, where your end system exists so you provide cd range if you want to add more cid range so you, it, there can be multiple cid range for your on-premise data center so you can add all those things here up to 95 cid range is allowed within one vpn then the local ASN, it's default. I have used 64512. 
okay and for adding new uh, c adder you just click uh, on this add new rules now for a bgp as i mentioned same thing like name vpc you know remote ip address routing type bgp and you have to provide the remote asn that is by default 65001 and local asn that is the mule soft asn that is 64512 so asn means like you know autonomous system number basically okay so generally uh, mostly like it depend like you know uh, uh, like uh, if your dvn device support a bgp protocol then in that case you can go with bgp otherwise you go with static then apart from that the next step you have to select the tunnel configuration either you can select the automatic or either you can select the custom so basically when we create the uh, vpn it create two tunnel tunnel 1 and the tunnel 2 basically okay so i will show you what does this mean so in case of automatic you you don't require any configuration okay it will automatically create the tunnels for you for your any point vpn which can be visible after the creation of the vpn you just select automatic and just click on this create vpn it will create a tunnel for you or tunnel one and tunnel two for you in case of custom right which uh, which is bit comp complex so you need to provide psk that is pre-shared key but it, which is used for authentication between you know on premise and the cloud of vpn connection so it can be from 8 to 64 character it should not start with 0 and you have to provide point to point CIDR so basically you can specify a size of slash 30 CIDR block from you know a 169.254.0.0 slash 16 range and CIDR block must be unique across all the VPN connection CIDR, CIDR block not supported these are the few CIDR block you, you cannot uh, use for this point to point CIDR so make sure like 250.0 slash 30 cannot be used 1 2 3 4 5 6 you know this cannot be used you can use 169.254.6.0 slash 30 here for tunnel 2 169.254.67.0 slash 30 for tunnel 1 like that you know okay and like you can provide the p uh, psk uh, for, for tunnel 0 and the tunnel 1 either you can get it from your network administrator and either you can use anything then you can share with your network ad administration so they can configure on you know on their device so once you set up the vpn so there are various status you know the status keep changing the first status will be pending at the tunnel 1 and tunnel 2 will be down so both will be down so in that case what is happening the it vpn is creating so vpn is just created okay and there are some actions pending on the background you might see this status for 10 to 15 minutes after creating vpn so basically what will happen so your tunnel will be down down and you know like and the status will be the pending so you, it creating the vpn and performing some actions on the backend so once it created the vpn successfully you know uh, everything is done so status will become available and down down so basically your vpn has successfully created but you need to do some configuration on your vpn device okay so for that then other status is up up or up slash down up up means like you know your tunnel one and the tunnel two is active in working in active active mode so basically the vpn device is supporting active active mode you know type of configuration if your tunnel one is up and tunnel two is down or tunnel two is up and tunnel one is down in that case your vpn device is working in active passive mode okay so to achieve this we have to do some configuration on the vpn device okay in case of failed down down so it means your vpn has not been created properly there is some issue with your vpn you need to create re, you know you need, need to delete the vpn and retry it okay so sometime you will see both tunnel 1 and tunnel 2 is up in that case that particular vpn device is working in active active mode in case one tunnel is up and other is down so one is you know active working in active mode and another is the you know uh, it's backup service in case of a uh, tunnel 1 goes down so tunnel 2 will become up you know uh, and it will make sure like you know your, there is a communication between cloud up and any point doesn't break up and in case of up up it's fine like if one tunnel goes down the other is already available okay so what you have to do so once the vpn is created you can download a vpn config so basically once you create a you know uh, once you come vpn uh, has been successfully created there is an option called get vpn config you will see just click on get vpn config you can device you can select your device vendor so basically you have some vpn device it might be cisco palo alto whatever so you can select if there's a no device mention you know in this particular device vendor you can use generic one then select the device platform and device software these are the th config and just download the config uh, you know and just share with your uh, network administration administrator so he can perform uh, perform the configuration on vpn device and make sure the connection is stabilized between a cloud 
and the any point cloud up and the on premise data center this other concept let me correct it this other concept like you know sometimes what happens like uh, you don't have a on premise data center like you have a, your all the application within the private subnet of a, of your aws cloud in that case you know uh, like uh, you can use ipsec tunneling but you know in that case like when you want to do the peer between two subnet two private subnet you can use the vpc peering let's consider you have a cloud up uh, you have a vpc in the cloud up and like you have a private subnet uh, vpc in the aws so you are, you have all the application backend services running on the aws private subnet in that case you can make use of vpc peering so vpc peering basically connect two vpcs in case it peers your private amazon vpc directly to your endpoint vpc this this enables you to route the traffic between two vpcs so they can communicate as though they are in the same network so this is how a vpc peering works so let me do one thing here it's a vpc peering so basically you have like you know the cloud up environment in us east one and this is my vpc 10.0.1.0 and like my aws private vpc or private subnet which is 192.62.0.22 which is also in us one so you can set up the vpc peering between you know your cloud up and the aws private vpc basically so so basically uh so this is how you can set up the vpc and when you need to set up the vpc when you want to do the peer peer between your cloud up vpc and the aws private subnets or private vpc in that case you can use the vpc pairing so there are certain points you need to consider so basically when you are creating a vpc it must be when you want to do the vpc pairing you need to make sure your cloud of vpc and the aws private vpc are in the same region okay so basically if you see on the uh, any point platform you don't have an option to create a vpc pairing for that you have to raise the ticket with the mules of support team and you have to fill one discovery template so basically i provided link here so you can go to here you know in this particular link so you can fill that particular uh, this discovery template so and mules of will create a vpc for you so they it we need to provide some basic detail like what is the subnet of the AWS VPC, what is the subnet of your cloud, of who, is, who are the contact person, such kind of information. Even like, you know, uh, you can ask, uh, you can raise the ticket with mules of support to set up your VPN IPsec tunneling also, but you can also do, you know, uh, yourself also. So that's why VPN IPsec tunneling sometimes is also known as a self service. Okay, for VPC pairing, you have to connect, contact, you know, mules of support team to create a VPC pairing. Okay. Thanks. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching it.